my episode. Whoa, 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 whoa. We get the 80s. We get the 80s. Oh, Leave it to me to, to rock out in the 80s. This. Yeah. You got to dress up. You got to have the shades, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. 80s. You can't tell, but I'm on a lot of cocaine right now. <laughs> it's the 80s. So I'm hosting the show. And today we are talking about twins and twins. Yes. William and Ernest Renshaw. Renshaw. A couple of uh, brothers in in the 80s that were a power couple in the tennis world. Okay. Okay. In the 1980s, tennis. Yeah. Okay. So they were playing... And you know the Agassiz and the San Francisco. Well, I I never found a match where they played them. Huh. And I I got I was going through my research. Uh, it's the eighteen eighties. Uh, <laughs> okay. Shit. All right. All right. So. Love of the losers hanging out. <laughs> Get your head ready, let your mind go. Losers can be lovers, but when is the show lovers for losers? But no well, legacy, no Sampras. Nah, but we, we we will have some comparisons to them. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Ooh, spoiler alert. Even, yeah. <laughs> All right. Hang on to your boots. <laughs> but uh, like I said, uh, we got William and Ernest Rinshaw. Now, Rinshaw. I've given them nicknames. Uh, William Slick Willie Chuck. Slick Willie Chuck. Slick Willie Chuck. All right. And then his brother Ernest. And I'm I'm giving them nicknames because they're twins, and I can't tell twins apart. That's my favorite part about it. Yep. And so Ernest, we gave him the Latin name of Luminare. No. And, and that I I did that exactly as Google Translate says it. Luminare. So uh, we got we got slick slick Willie and Luminati, but we'll call them we'll call them Will and Ernest for short because their nicknames are too long. <laughs> Apparently, these guys uh, were born on the same day. No shit. Yeah, twins it's, born uh, that's on the same a, day. It's one of the weird things about twins. Wow. But it was 1861, January 3rd, oh, and uh, New Year's babies. Yeah, pretty close. Pretty close. If you're you're a small about town, that. that might have been the first babies of the year. Well, it's the 1800s, so they're all small towns. That's true. I mean, <laughs> 1860s. But it's, it's all even London was a small town. <laughs> and they, so let's let's jump forward because there's no records of them in their childhood, much mm-hmm. like Jesus Christ. <laughs> and uh, so let's. They're in college, Cheltenham, ah. or Cheltenham, <laughs> Cheltenham. <laughs> College. That school's known for uh, mostly their academics and their extracurriculars, which is like, well, what what else would a school be known yeah. for? <laughs> it's like uh, prize fighting. <laughs> and then when I, I looked further, they're like, oh, well, by that we mean uh, their military contributions. So, mm. okay. And uh, so it, it's a code sports. for rich kids go here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It is a public school slash private boarding school okay so and it's it's one of the most expensive in the uk to it to this day it's still around like we are talking the 1800s here and this college is still around this would have been around the 1880s okay um there's wimbledon you know the tennis yeah yeah that yeah yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's called the championship at wimbledon it's such a mouthful. Championship. And they, they, they allowed for there to be this, uh, what do they call it? All comers. Okay. Championship. So 48, I think people got to enter a bracket and play down and kill each other. And, and <laughs> Hunger Games no, style. No, oh, wait. No, no, no. They, they was, didn't kill each other. It was other. just tennis matches. Yeah, it was just tennis oh, matches. Okay. And then the winner got to go to the championship at Wimbledon. So oh, it, it, he, oh, they didn't, wow. so he or she, like, well, at, th- at that time, he didn't have to be anybody. So it's like the golf, the U.S. amateur, the championship of that. Yeah, exactly. And lately, those amateurs have been kicking ass. Yeah. But this guy, <laughs> we're going to talk about William for the most part at the first, um, because okay. so William was more. Well, he was like the Serena. Well, I guess I, Venus was pretty good, but Serena was. 
See, one of the best of all time. I never, I never knew who I was actually watching. Yeah, Serena was the younger, but then she was, you know. Uh, okay, well the then he's the Serena because William is the younger brother. Okay, by how long? Fifteen minutes. Okay, all right. Hey, that's pretty efficient birth for the mother. I mean, Good it could have been two different days if they I planned know. it right. <laughs> But imagine back then, the 1800s, having twins. Two kids, man. But, okay, okay, where are we? Where are we? Okay, okay, we're in the 80s. He's in college, the Chilton Town Come College. Mm-hmm. And he gets into the All-Comers Championship. 1880, he and his brother both were in that same All-Comers bracket. Okay. And William was out on the second round. Oh. But his brother made earnest? it to the third round. Okay. And the importance of being earnest. Oh, nice. But neither one of them made it to actually get accepted into the championship. So there's there's yeah. nothing else written about that. Well, time. usually that first year, it's just kind of like they were testing it out. Yeah, race. and they're finding out. I mean, they're 20 years old. Yeah. Or they're not even, they're 19 at this first one. They're 20 in 1881. <laughs> so he makes it to the championship at Wimbledon mm-hmm. in 1881. Now that year, in the singles challenge, uh, which was the only challenge, because there wasn't doubles really? until 1884. Oh, Side I theory. I feel like the two brothers were so good at doubles mm-hmm. that they pushed for there to be a Wimbledon oh, doubles event. Like a Wimbledon championship for that and game. I'll tell you why later. <laughs> we'll be right back after these words from our great sponsors. Babushka. Christ, you're gone, die. Put yourself into a Hyundai Sonata today with zero, zero, zero down. Just an easy 98-month plan. You'd be a ripe-ass simp if you didn't jump on this deal. Bob Ushka gone, die. Bob Ushka. Christ, you're gone, die. So, we're 1881, and he goes up against, we're talking about William now, John Hartley. Okay. And this is where the world, all eight Hundred people <laughs> get to see for mostly the first time. There's no TV, so yeah. they're they're seeing this live. I think there was about twenty five hundred people at Wimbledon, yeah, but it was just more of a slow paced, like gentlemanly game. Yeah, I think that. everybody kind of like treated it more like table tennis. Okay, yeah. And then he went in and gave it the power serve, the volley and serve. I mean, that really comes in when you're playing doubles. So he Again, eight days later, them he. Exactly. Yeah. Like he made the zombies fast. Yeah. It, he, yeah. but it, a small little tweak that's just like a revolutionary change. To there a was a, a guy he plays and he plays a lot. Uh-huh. His, he also kind of created a new thing at tennis around the same time. Okay. And it was, he introduced the top spin. Oh, okay. But it, it became known as the Lawford stroke or the Lawford forehand. All right. All right. So, it's his first match against this guy named John Hartley. Okay. Now, the year before, John Hartley had lost the Wimbledon to this Lawford guy because that's oh. when that Lawford guy brought out his top spin like, maneuver. Yeah, just... The very next year, which is William Renshaw's uh, first year, he comes out with this new serve fast and volley hard kind so, of mentality. But so John Hartley's like, motherfucker. The... Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are practicing? What the fuck is How this? How is this possible? <laughs> and so he loses a second year in a row to these new techniques. Huh. And so all of a sudden, tennis is becoming exciting. And it's, it becomes exciting to the rich. It's going to become exciting to the poor. I don't yeah. know how that works, but it, it does. And so they go on to kind of keep winning. I mean, we've got some records here on, on wins. Let me just tell you real quick. Let's see. On Wimbledon singles for our William okay. Renshaw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. All time records? Like, no, Wimbledon championships. Oh, all time. Oh, seven championships. Seven years. Wow. Now, out of that, one, two, three, four, five, six are in a row. Consecutive wow. is the big word. For so, that. 1880. 81. And yeah, when he starts, mm-hmm. all the way to 86, nice. he wins. Wow. And then uh, there's doubles that I, I still feel like the brothers kind of talked Wimbledon into doing this. I don't know. They, you don't have to fact check me on that, though. Right. We can just pretend. 
But they started doing doubles in 1884. And would you believe that 84, 85, and 86, the the brothers brothers win doubles. Three in a row. Three in a row. And so he was winning the singles that year and the doubles that year. Yeah. And that was in 84, 85, 86. And the only reason he didn't do it those first three years is because there wasn't a doubles. So he would have won six in six. Oh, yeah. If there were doubles for those first three years. Coming out of the bat, his first real year. Because we're not counting that one where they lost. That first year where they just kind of... It was experienced. It, it, it tested in the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, okay, wow. so we've gotten to eighty six, but let me let me catch up and just make sure I'm I'm not rushing over something here. Oh yeah, so this this volley and serve. See the 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 partnership dominated. Yeah, you, you said what, um, there was a nickname for it. Well, the the Rinshaw Rush. Oh wow, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, a little alliteration. They yeah. also were both very accurate for there not being computers at the time, so. Yeah. Or, I mean, they're using um, these kind of rackets. Here, let me put that up. Oh, yeah. So we're at 86, and I need to go back and tell you that 84, 85, and 86, he beats a man by the name of Herbert Lawford. Now, that, Different Lawford? that sounds familiar yeah. because I just talked about him. That's the same guy. The same guy the that had the top spin. So now... We've got these two guys both beat out the regular old players. So it's really like this like showcase of out with the old, here's new tennis. Yeah. And that excited people. Herbert had had several championships under his belt before you know the, the Renshaws okay. came along. And then he lost three times in a row. Now we get to 87. The dark cloud rolls in. <laughs> oh, no. What happened? Well, our main guy, Slick Willie, Willie Chuck. Ooh, yep. He has some issues with his elbow. Oh no! I do care that A you hurt your elbow. Highly unheard of, unheard of condition. Okay. Known only to those very few people that played tennis. Is it tennis elbow, elbow, elbow? Now. It was at this time when this celebrity at this point, because he's, he's been playing for, I mean, at this point, six years, and he's won every year. They're going to talk about him. I mean, that's all they can do. There's no, like, real good newspaper or TV, people or internet. Or, yeah. I, and they're just like, hey, <laughs> did you hear? Slick he- Willie Chuck. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> good. That was it. That that's was the nightly spot news. on British accent. I forgot where we were. <laughs> we could have been in Wales. That was that was I... spot on Wales. That was good for a dying Ooh. orca. <laughs> That's a spot on whale. That's a... <laughs> hey, off the rail. <laughs> cluck cluck, it's flickety cleanse. The metro area's first and only lesbian owned chicken finger place. Get fingered at Flickety Clint's weeknights. Single ladies eat for free. Come soon, lick her service. Flickety Clint's. The embodiment of feminine power in the form of breaded chicken tenders. I should have mentioned earlier that uh, the Rinshaw twins built their own uh, grass tennis court on their property so they could practice whenever oh, they wanted to. Okay. And there was probably maybe, you know, 30 to 40 of these in the world at this time. Really? And they, they had one of those. Wow. Okay. And they would also play. Tennis is a summer sport. Mm-hmm. And so during the summer, they would play in England and Ireland. Um, and basically UK area, you know. Yeah. And then during the winter, they would go over to the French Riviera. Oh. And then they would also play at their house so like during that time. Yeah, so they played all the time. They practiced all the time. That's why that is That's how you win six in a row. You become a pro- professional Which, athlete. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and say right now, I'm, spoiler alert, the record of six consecutive wins at is Wimbledon? still held today. He's the, he's still holds that. You can look it up. You Who's, can fact check me on the spot. Does someone have five? Oh, there's, yeah. I mean, we've got, um, what is it, Federer? Roger. And Sampras, I Pete, believe, Roger. both have uh, five. Okay, I can see that five in a row. Five in a five in a row. Uh, and, I could be wrong. I could be wrong on them. I didn't do research on them. <laughs> no, but, but, so Renshaw has six in a row. Six and in that's a row. The all-time championship. Yeah, it has, the that one has to be. Right now now wow. he had seven championships, but so did Sampras. Yeah, 
Now, Federer came in and he has eight. Yeah. But the, Sampras and Federer aren't there was six a, in a row. But what about uh, Ernest? Did he did he win Wimbledon uh, singles? They won doubles. So Ernest won. I got it right here. The one year, I believe it was. No, no, no. I take that back. He won in 1888. So I believe okay. that his brother, William, was still recovering. So 87, 88, he's out of the game. Yeah. And so his brother won in 88. Okay. Now, 87 went to uh, Lawford. Oh, the guy okay. that lost three times in a row awesome. finally won yeah. the year that his brother the adversary was was gone. And adversary, so thank his you. Top spin method beat everyone else. Yeah, it just didn't beat the rush. Like, and I think uh, huh. Ernest lost to him that year. Okay, but yeah. then the next year came back and won. <laughs> but then eighty nine, William is like da 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 da. I'm back, bitches. And so he comes back. He not only wins the singles, but he and his brother come back together and win doubles one last time. So four doubles championships and seven No, singles. no, no, five. They won it in 84, 85, 86, 88, Ernest won. Okay. 89, uh, they both won. So I don't, I think actually he might have played with his brother on that, in that 88 year. That okay. he just didn't do the singles. He might have. They didn't, win, si they didn't yeah. win singles, neither one of them did. But that he could have still won going with his brother because they were a power couple like oh, Sonny yeah. and Cher. Like Venus and Serena. Like Kelly Ripa and Mark Consuelos. The the seven singles record, mm -hmm. uh, which was tied by Sampras, didn't happen till two thousand. Oh wow! So it went from eighteen eighty nine to two thousand. That's when. Oh wow! And yeah. then Federer made eight in twenty seventeen. Oh okay, so he held that record until less than ten years ago. Over a hundred years, yeah. Wow! That's and wild. then his sixth consecutive is still. Intact. That, and, and who knows? There's probably a, a little kid right now that's going to beat that, maybe, or someone who hasn't oh, even there been will born be. yet. You know? it'll, be, it'll be a robot. <laughs> yeah. They'll let robots play. It'll be the first AI robot hybrid. Nice. <laughs> but, okay, so everything kept talking about he won these years, these years, all the way to 89, and then there wasn't really much talking about him. Okay. And I had to do some digging, and it turns out he went to Wimbledon in 1890, okay. and he lost to a man named Willoughby Hamilton. Willoughby, okay. But that man is for another show. He had too much going on for me to even unpack. Okay. Um, so we'll just, yeah, pin, you know, pin his name. It's a name, too. It's a good name. Willoughby. Willoughby. I think I'm saying it right. Or is it? Won't to be. We, we, le, gib. <laughs> Hamilton. Hamilton. Alexander. So they, I, I think I understand, though, why he lost in 1890 he had those injuries he came back to prove he could do it one more time and then he retired basically yeah. but go back in 1888 so that year that it looks like he's not really playing singles but he i think he did compete in doubles mm -hmm. uh, he was also elected the first president of the british lawn tennis association oh no kidding which yeah. later becomes who does wimbledon that really? happened in, in 1888. Wow. And he was the first. And ever. he was the first. And he held it until his death. Yeah. We've gotten to that point of the story, folks. He died? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. I almost knocked everything over. <laughs> the way you asked that. I peed a little. <laughs> yes, he did. He died in um, August of 1904. Oh, oh shoot. Five so years he, later. He was 43 years old. Oh, no. He, okay. he, he. That's William. Set, yeah, this is William. Now, his brother died five years before that. He died in 1899? Yeah. Yeah. I guess, oh, you do your math really fast. I got to look at my notes on that one. Yeah. 1899. Yeah. Oh, okay. And it was. So it was like shortly after they won their last doubles championship. He holy died. Sh at, uh, 10 years. He didn't even get 10 years after that last doubles. Wow. But, but I also need to bring up that his brother. He did keep playing because he continued to win the Irish championships. This is Ernest okay. in 83, 87, 88, and 92. Oh, okay. And so he died seven years after that last championship. Oh, wow. Okay. And that was Ernest. Yeah. Luminati. Yeah. But old Slick Willie Chuck, 
He passed away from epileptic convulsions. I, I think know. I'm saying that right. Yeah. Epileptic convulsions. Yeah. Uh, and then his brother died of ingesting spirits of carbolic acid. It's like in all sorts of products, but it was used at that time oh. to on like wounds. It was like a what well, we do hydrogen peroxide or oh, neosporin. Okay. It's like a okay, it, disinfectant. disinfectant. Exactly. But you drink that. Apparently. So it, it has me thinking it's some like bootleg liquor. Oh, um, like oh, kind of okay. antifreeze in the wine type shit, or you know, like an accidental overdose or yeah, hopefully it's but it was never proven way. if it was intentional or accidental. Oh, huh. Well, dang. So I guess that's the, the, it being so long ago, there's no, like, there's no way to know. Exactly no one, no one to ask. Yeah. No, nothing was written down. And it, and it's such, it, it doesn't matter either, I guess. Right. <laughs> to, we, I think at this point we can kind of make up our own story. Yeah, exactly. But that that's an interesting um, run for those two guys. And then they won. I didn't realize that the double They had the 80s. That's why I got so excited the 80s. about the 80s. Triple pop. Like, damn. <laughs> I did so much cocaine. <laughs> oh, I, I need one more thing to mention. Um, both brothers were entered into the, the International Tennis Hall of Fame. Oh, cool. So you see, we did an episode where our guys are in the Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. and it's because I hosted. Nice. <laughs> like, uh, in 1983. A hundred years later? Yeah. Why? Uh, why were that long? That's I don't wild. know. I don't know. 83. Okay. But and, together. But same and a lot of the other guys I talked about that also did great things, they came later. They came like in the 2017 kind of like. That's true. Like, so there, there was just. Huh. These guys in 83 were one of the first. I think it had just started this Hall of Fame or something. Oh, yeah, probably. Because that would have been about 100 years after golf was a thing. Yeah, exactly. Wait, we're talking tennis here. 